Hi, I'm Estelle Trengove and this is my short video on capacitors which I made for the electric circuits class at the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Previously we looked at circuits containing resistors. Resistors absorb energy but they can't store energy. Capacitors, on the other hand, are energy storage elements. We can model the behavior of capacitors by thinking of capacitors as consisting of two parallel metallic plates. And those metallic plates have lots of free electrons. So if we connect them to an alternating current source with a peak voltage of Vp, then during the positive half cycle, this plate will become positively charged and this plate will become negatively charged. And it, on each plate there will be a charge Q. In between these plates is a dielectric material which doesn't contain lots of um, free electrons, so it does not become charged. So capacitance is basically charge over voltage and it is expressed in farads. We can see from our model that the voltage where Vc is the voltage across the capacitor. Capacitance, C, is proportional to the area of the plates and that makes sense because obviously the bigger the plates are, the more charge they can store. It is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. So the further the plates are from each other, the smaller the capacitance. And then capacitance is also proportional to epsilon which is a quality of the dielectric material between the two plates. Remember that when we started doing circuits, we said that current is the rate of change of charge at a particular point in the circuit. So remember we said that the current I... is equal to the rate of change of charge dq over dt. And also from this equation above, we know that charge Q is equal to capacitance times voltage. So if we take the derivatives of both sides, therefore, dQ dt is equal to C dV dt. So the current voltage relationship for a capacitor and we know that dQ dt is equal to um, current. So the current voltage relationship for a capacitor is given by I, the current, is equal to C dV dt. So let me repeat that. Um, for a capacitor... I of T 
is equal to C dV dt. So the current is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage. The rate of change of the voltage. So that means that if we have a DC circuit with a battery and let's say it's 6 volts and we've got connected to that a resistor and a capacitor and we've got a current I of T flowing there then we know that the voltage of a DC source doesn't change over time because remember we assume that it's an ideal voltage source so its voltage remains constant as a function of time. It doesn't change as time goes on. And so that produces a very significant result, namely that if there's no change in voltage for DC, direct current, dV dt is equal to zero. It doesn't, the voltage doesn't change as a function of time. And so under DC conditions, I of T is equal to C dV dT, which is equal to zero. And that produces the result that for... DC conditions, a capacitor looks like an open circuit. So, in fact, we could draw this drawing under DC conditions, obviously, with that 6-volt source would, in fact, look like this. And... That means because there isn't a closed loop for the current to flow in, the current would be zero. Remember, current needs a closed path to flow, so in this case, I of t would be equal to zero. Let's look quickly at capacitors in series. So if we have a circuit with the voltage source and we have a number of capacitors in series we'll call this one C1 and we have a current flowing I of T and then we've got C2 and then our circuit goes on for however many capacitors you have in series up to Cn. Then, of course, we have the same current flowing through all of the capacitors, but each of them has its own voltage across it, um, which we'll call V1, V2, and so on up to Vn.
And now, remember, we said that I of t is equal to c dv dt. And therefore, if we integrate both sides, we can see that v of t is equal to 1 upon c times the integral from naught to t of i of t dt. And then remember, when you integrate, you also have a, a constant of integration. And in this case, it will be the initial voltage, the voltage at time t naught. And we know by Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that V of t is equal to V1 plus V2 plus and so on up to plus Vn. And that is equal to 1 upon C1 times the integral from naught to t of i of t dt plus v1 of t naught plus and so on up to 1 upon c n, the integral from naught to t of i of t dt plus Vn at time t naught. And we know that all of these i of t dt's are all the same, so therefore we can say V of t is equal to 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 plus and so on up to 1 upon Cn times the in integral from t naught to t of i of t dt plus the initial voltage v naught at time t naught. And this then is the equivalent capacitance, 1 upon C equivalent, for capacitors in series. For capacitors in parallel, we have a voltage source, V of T, and we have connected to it C1 C2 and so on up to Cn and now we know because they're connected in parallel the voltage across each capacitor is V of t, but the current I of t is not the same. So we'll call this current I1 and this one I2 and so on up to In. And then we know that by Kirchhoff's current law, I of t is equal to I1 plus I2 plus and so on up to In. And for each capacitor, the current through it 
is equal to cx dv dt. So I, therefore, is equal to C1 dv dt plus C2 dv dt plus and so on up to Cn dv dt. And we know that all of these dv dt's are the same it's the same rate of change of voltage, so we can write I of t is equal to C1 plus C2 plus and so on up to Cn times dv dt. And this is then C equivalent for capacitors in parallel. And that is the end of this video.